exactly is human geography? Human geography is the study of why people choose to live where they do. Human geographers seek to discover who lives where, how they live, and why they live there. Geography as a field of inquiry. The study of geography explores where, how, and why different people, places, and environments came to exist and the various effects it has on each other. Geographers examine these places, people, and environments in spatial terms. Their position in space can spark as many new questions as it answers. However, so geographers are constantly asking questions such as, where is it? Why is it located there? How do the people there adapt to this environment? Why do they build dwellings like this? Where do they come from and how do they survive? We must thank the wisdom of our ancients for starting off human geography. The father of geography, a Greek scholar and mathematician named Eurasmus, defined the word geography, calling it geo, earth, graphos, to write. He credited it with many firsts. He was the first person to compute the circumference of the earth, which he accomplished using a measurement called stads or the length of stadiums at the time. He was incredibly accurate. He also used his mathematical genius to invent pi and was the first to accurately calculate the tilt of the Earth's axis. He invented systems of latitude and longitude in his spare time too, was the first to measure the equator. Another Greek scholar, Herodotus, drew up the first map known to world at his time in 450 BCE as part of a study of the Greco-Persian Wars. The extent of the known world at this time was the Mediterranean Sea and its immediate surroundings. The basic building blocks of human geography are space, place, location, scale, and regions. Since geography is a spatial science, let's begin talking about what space is. Space is the extent of area that is occupied by something. It can refer to physical and cultural objects on the surface of the earth. Relative space is concerned with something in relation to something else and changes constantly as interrelationships between people, places, and things change. Absolute space is a measurable area with definite boundaries. Absolute space is a central ingredient of map making, map making and spatial analysis of any type. Site is the physical location of a place, and the situation refers to the location of a place based on its relation to other places. For example, the site of Foxburg on the banks of the Allegheny River in northwestern Pennsylvania. The situation of Foxburg lies equiv equivalent distance between Erie and Pittsburgh and is three miles upstream from the town of Edmonton. Place is another word for location. We examine place very carefully in human geography to determine the values and attributes and location processes. We often refer to a location sense of place and are talking about its attributes, physical, cultural, emotional, <clears throat> that the location has to its personally. Conversely, placelessness refers to the condition in which a place actually loses its sense of being special. Unique urban or regional flavor of a location becomes diminished or lost as mass merchandising outlets, fast food restaurants, and brand name real retail stores erase its sense of place. Places share similar attributes and some of them are listed below. All places have location, direction, and distance from other places, change over time, interrelate with all other places in some way, have size and scale, possess a physical aspect and cultural aspect, and can be grouped into regions based on how they are alike and how they are dissimilar. Location is also important when studying human geography. Absolute location is the actual space a place occupies on the Earth's surface, and is usually referred to the mathematical form of using degrees, minutes, seconds, latitude, longitude coordinates, or even simply a street address from a house or building. The system of describing locations 
of U.S. places using township, range, or section is another method of describing absolute location. <clears throat> now, relative location refers to the location of a place in relation to the location of other places. Relative location vary greatly depend on the perspective. The phrases down south, up north, back east, out west are examples of how history and tradition still flavor our speech of the United States. For example, a relative location would be Pittsburgh is located in the confluence of two rivers approximately 90 miles north of Morganton, West Virginia. Location is related to the global grid system of latitude-longitude. Latitude is the distance north and south of the equator and is measured in lines called parallels, which decrease in length as they get closer to the north and south poles. Longitude is the distance east and west of the prime meridian, or lines of equal length that meet, north, that meet at the north and south poles. Scale or the degree of generalization on a map is used in two very important ways in geography. First, scale can actually mean the frame of reference for studying something. The agricultural practices of the world, global scale, a region, regional scale, or a community, local scale. Scale can also mean the size of a unit on a map as a ratio of its size on the map to the same units on the Earth's surface. It is important to know which meaning you are talking about when you're using the term. For example, reference to your study of large-scale desertification using small-scale map can be confusing. A small-scale map shows smaller amount of detail for a larger area. A large-scale map shows a larger amount of detail for a smaller area. Regions are an important concept because they allow us to study a place, space, and locations better detail by allowing us to generalize about a common characteristic and thus group them. A region is an area that displays common traits such as culture, government, language, landform. Regions can be ma mapped and analyzed. Just as historians group events into specific periods, geographers group areas spatially into regions. The example of this grouping would be the Sun Belt or the Silicon Valley. There are three main types of regions you should know. The first one, which are formal regions, this is where a region with a high level of consistency in a certain cultural or physical attribute. Second type of regions are functional or nodal regions, and this is a region with a node or a center hub surrounded by interconnecting linkages. Usually connections relate to train, communications, and transportation. And our last type of region was a perceptual or vernacular region and a region defined by feelings and prejudice that may or may not be true, but we use them to construct our mental maps. Maps and models are essential to study human geography. Maps usually display data spatially in a flat, two-dimensional manner, which means all maps are flawed in some way. Projections are versions of maps that try to minimize one attribute of the map, but do so in the expense of other attributes. Distortions of conformality, location, distance, direction, scale, and area always result from this process. The type of production, excuse me, the type of projection you should choose is one that shows you what you most need to know about the area. When relationships between points based on angles are needed as navigational or met uh, metrological charts, The Mercator projection, or the Lambert conic projection, is used. Equal distant projections, such as the equal distant conic projection, or equal triangular projections, are used when accurate distances from the center of the map are required. When directional relationships from given a central point are important, the equal area projections are often chosen. All projections require a compromise on one or more of the following attributes, space, area, distance, or direction. World maps and the Robinson projection display a compromise in one or more of the following characteristics. Some maps, however, are, are mind maps, mental maps. 
They are mental images in our head that enable us to get to our friend's house without getting lost or help us from getting one class to another at school. Different types of maps show different types of information. All maps are biased in some way or another. Be sure to recognize the map's author, purpose, and intention and take that into account when studying spatial display of data on a map. New Geographic Technologies The use of satellite imagery provides us with the images of Earth's surface that aid us in mapping and studying various processes that occur. This process of detecting the nature of an area from a distance is called remote sensing and has actually been around for 150 years. People have attached cameras to airplanes, kites, hot air balloons to photograph places for a distance for many years. Various processes such as water pollution, desertification, and even military surveillance can be accomplished with remote sensing through the use of infrared film and thermal scanning. Today, satellites rely on images from outer space to receiving stations, which digitally convert them into images for scientific study and mapping uses. Geographic Information Systems, GIS, marry mapping software with a database for the purpose of overlaying various data layers on basic locational map grids. An abundance of data sets today have been made with GIS, a valuable tool for human geographers studying questions about regional, social, economic problems, or analyzing physical processes as they impact human behavior. Spatial Behavior inter Interaction The two main questions geography answers are uh, where and why. Maps have long been the primary tool of geographers when answering the questions of where places and activities are located on the Earth's surface. To answer the question of why, geographers must turn to the process of spatial interaction and diffusion. The relationships between the members of our community depend on the type and kind of human interaction that occurs among the community members. In the same way, the interconnectedness between places depends on the amount of spatial interaction between them. Diffusion is the movement of people, ideas, customs, and information between places. Spatial diffusion is the spread of something over place or time. The two basic types of diffusion are relocation and expansion. Spatial distribution refers to the array of types of items on the Earth's surface. All spatial distributions have density, dispersion, and some type of pattern. Density is the number of an item within a unit of area. It is more than just the count of an item. It refers to how many of the item it is in a limited space or area. One million people in a country the size of Switzerland will look a lot different than one million people inside the People's Republic of China, for example. Density is an important concept when studying spatial issues. We will discuss the different types of density in our further units. All right, so one more final review tip. Human geography is a study of why people choose to live where they do. The study of human geography involves the use of maps, models, spatial analysis technologies, and techniques, and it's a means of abstracting and simplifying space and all it contains for study. Maps depict three-dimension Earth in the three-dimension Earth in two dimensions and are inherently flawed due to this and they are designed with special purposes that should match the needs of the map user. All right, folks, uh, five review questions to go over based on what we listened to and read in the chapter. Uh, question number one, Chinatown would be an example of which type of region? Functional, nodal, perceptual, formal, or uniform? Number two, the map created by Lewis and Clark would be called a Thematic map, chloropleth, graduated circle, general purpose map, or topographic map. Number three, if you wanted to see the location of a city building in Seattle, Washington, you would need a large scale map, small scale map, topographic map, graduated circle map, or chloropleth map.